Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, come at you with another review. And as I said in my review for a Serbian film, the uh, Universal Monsters box set has been sent back out to Amazon to try to get one that's in actually good condition. So in the meantime, I'm just going to move on to the next marathon that I had planned, or the next group of films I had planned, which is Hammer Horror. Now, Hammer was, is, they're still around, kind of making movies. They were a, a film company based in England and started in the 30s making uh, mysteries, noir films. And then in the 50s, kind of started making sci-fi and horror films. Their first real experiment with horror was in of 1955 which was the quarter mass experiment I believe is what it was called but 1957 they had their first major horror hit it was also their first color horror film it's one of the first uh, major horror films that was in color in general and in 1956 Universal ceased their cycle of monster films. The last one was The Creature Walks Among Us. <clears throat> 1956 and so they were all done. So in 1957 Hammer sort of started their run at monsters. Like their, their first big hit was this film 1957. Again their first color horror film. Their first major hit. And it was the year after uh, Universal stopped. And that was... The Curse of Frankenstein. Which I'm holding it up on here because this is not the original cover. And it's a two-pack with Taste the Blood of Dracula. Which I already had, but this was the cheapest way to get Curse of Frankenstein. And I know that sort of sounds like a sequel type title the curse of instead of just Frankenstein but the idea behind this film is they really wanted to separate it from what Universal did so this is a retelling of the classic story by uh, Mary Shelley <clears throat> it does have a lot of the plot points that her original novel and even the Universal film had but it's enough there's enough of its own um, a, a material in this for it to stand by itself. And they really didn't want to make it seem like a remake or a reboot. They wanted to show people that this is their own version. <clears throat> and this is also the film that made Peter Cushing, who plays Frankenstein, and Christopher Lee, who plays the creature which he's called the creature in this universal, he was the monster. And it made Cushing and Lee the new Karloff and Lugosi. They were the next huge horror stars. And I, ooh, I really enjoyed this film. As a big fan of just Frankenstein in general, especially the whole, the original story, this was a good retelling of it. And I appreciate what they did to make it stand on its own, which they made it more about the doctor, Dr. Frankenstein. So like the Frankenstein monster, he's really only in this film, the third one, and I think the next to last one, which is just a comedic retelling anyway. This series is all about Frankenstein himself, which I thought was a great idea perfect way to separate from uh, Universal. Some critics have considered this to be the first gory horror film because this, this was probably the first major horror film to be in color. And it being a European film, it does have very fluorescent red blood, thick red blood, almost like the pure red paint that you would see in like uh, 60s and 70s 
Italian films. And you know, the film opens up in a, a prison dungeon. Cushing is a Baron Victor Frankenstein. They actually made him Victor instead of Henry, like in the Universal. But his friend was named Victor. You know, it was backwards in the novel. Here it's Frankenstein. Uh, it's Victor and Paul. Almost every apprentice he has in this series is named Paul. I don't know why. But he's been arrested. He's awaiting execution for his crimes. He's visited by a priest and he tells him the story that we're about to see. Which at a very young age, his mother died, left him the estate. He got very into science and he was mentored and tutored for a, a number of years, became a quite a brilliant scientist obsessed with creating life. And, you know, his first attempt was bringing a, a dead puppy back to life, which I want to get the actor's name. Robert Urquhart is the guy that plays Paul. <clears throat> and another thing about Hammer is where it's based out of England, all their actors are English. So you, it's like a British version of everyone else. Like, you have, like, I guess Cushing would be like the, a, a British Lugosi. Lee would be the British Karloff, and so on. Uh, uh, Michael Goh, who's not in this, played Alfred in the Burton Schumacher uh, Batman films. So it was cool seeing him way back then. But, you know, so him and Paul, they bring life to this puppy. And then he decides to create life from death, from um, scavenged body parts. And Paul is with him to a point, and then he just, he can't take it anymore. He doesn't want to go out salvaging body parts. So Frankenstein decides to go through with it and Peter Cushing is amazing as Frankenstein in this where in the original Colin Clive played Frankenstein as an obsessed scientist who then regrets his you know going into things he shouldn't be doing Frankenstein relishes in it or Cushing relishes in it just there's a way Cushing acts, the way he thinks he does with his eyes and just his reaction. He is ruthless. He is evil. Just like a, just it's almost like this arrogance to his evil. And finally, and of course, you know, it, it does have the plot points of the original. He wants to use a brilliant scientist brain so he has a brilliant scientist killed by killing him himself <laughs> making it look like an accident so when he goes to take the brain out Paul comes down he objects tries to take the brain from him it drops and there's glass all in it so the brain still gets damaged of course a damaged brain instead of the abnormal brain but it's still you know it's not the direct text, but, you know, they kind of played with it a little bit, made it their own, which I really appreciate. And, of course, when we finally see the creature, um, they couldn't make the creature look like the monster from Universal. The bolts in the neck, the flat top, because Universal actually owned the rights to the look itself. So they had to create their own. And he more or less looks like a more human version of the Universal Karloff look. Instead of a flat top, he's got like a rounded head, but he's got almost the same hair. He's got, you know, cuts with staples, and one eye is all uh, 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 milky. 
It doesn't have the bolts. And, you know, he promises Paul that he'll be destroyed, but of course he doesn't. He wants to keep teaching him. But when the monster gets out, you know, he's out in the woods. There's this old blind man with his grandson. His grandson's by the water. He doesn't do anything with the grandson. It looks like they're nodding to the a little girl at the pond in the original film, but they don't quite go there. But he does interact with the blind man. And instead of making friends, which is then taken away from him, the blind man acts in self-defense at the monster, the creature, excuse me, doesn't really know how to react. So they're still the blind, they still do the blind man, which was one of the greatest parts of Bride of Frankenstein. <clears throat> and yeah, they really do their own thing and it just keeps going all the way up. He's engaged to his cousin, uh, Elizabeth, which I haven't read the book since I was a kid, so I don't remember if that's how it is in the book. But he also has this maid, or maiden, named uh, uh, Justine, who wants to marry him. He even locks her in a room with the monster until he kills her, because she threatens to tell people about him. And that's just, like, Peter Cushing is, he's just, he really knows how to play cunning, charming evil. Which I know he gets worse as the series goes on, but you know, he did a fantastic job in this. And of course, it, it ends with us back in the uh, dungeon prison where Paul comes in. He's like, go ahead, tell him that what I said was the truth. And Paul doesn't say anything. So he looks crazy. And I love the makeup on Cushing, you know, the bags under his eyes, and really makes him look like he's gone through hell. I do like the look of the monster. Or, I keep calling him the monster, he's the creature of this. <clears throat> but you, even though this one is more or less the only one that is Frankenstein, as everyone knows it, I still thought it was a pretty damn good movie. This was also, uh, as far as Hammer and Horror goes, this was the first one directed by Terrence Fisher, who Terrence Fisher, he's he's like the James Whale for horror. I mean, he directed, even though James Whale directed like at least three that I can think of for Universal, Terrence Fisher directed a fuck ton. All of Frankenstein, Dracula, The Mummy, bunch of sequels of each like Terrence Fisher is the hammer horror director and he did a great job uh, Hazel Court plays Elizabeth the only real bloody scene is when the monster gets out and they're tracking him down and Paul shoots him in the eye with his rifle you just see the blood come down which Frankenstein blames on him. He says the brain is damaged because you put a bullet in it. Because there is a part where some time has passed and Frankenstein wants to show Peter that he's done some brain surgery. He's tweaked him a little bit. He's got like shaved head. He's tweaked his brain. He gives him simple commands like you would with a dog. And you know, that's what he tells him, you know, you know, I made him, but this is your fault that he's like this because you put a bullet in his brain after you already damaged his brain. And he tells Paul, it's just, I'm just going to keep putting brains in it until I find one that works. And it caught up with him. And I know that the next film, Revenge of Frankenstein, picks right up from here. But with Frankenstein's monster being my favorite monster... And the story, Frankenstein, probably be my favorite, like, super classic, really well-known horror story. I, I really enjoyed this. 
I actually thought it was better than a lot of the Frankenstein sequels after Son of Frankenstein from uh, Universal. Definitely one hell of a start for Hammer Horror. I mean, like with Universal, where it was Dracula that's, that started everything here. For them, it was Frankenstein. I'm really excited to see what the rest of this series has to offer. I only have the first three at this point. Curse, Revenge, and uh, The Evil of Frankenstein. I do have almost all the Draculas now, but I I'm going to continue with Frankenstein. I'm not really sure what else there is to say, really. Um, oh, this was Peter Cushing's first lead lead role. Christopher Lee was casted because of his height. So that's that's pretty amazing. Which Bale Lugosi, that was his first lead role as well. It opened with an X cer uh, certificate. The uh, the makeup artist was Phil Leakey. He also did makeup for Dracula and, and Revenge of Frankenstein. So yeah, uh, this is a pretty interesting era. And another thing I can say is the production design. I mean, even though they're doing like modern retellings, I guess, they really did a wonderful job at doing this like... Um, Victorian era London. Everyone's in like Victorian era clothes, the set designs. It's supposed to look kind of cheap, but it works. You got like a, a mate painting backgrounds, a lot of really gothic imagery, like castles, stone walls, uh, gas lights or torches, uh, spiral stone staircases. The, the laboratory of Frankenstein may not be as memorable as the original one, you know, with all the electrodes that buzz and spark and all that. This one's pretty, it's a pretty low-key lab, but they still put plenty of detail into it. And I think this was the first one, first Frankenstein film, to show the creature being made in some sort of apparatus that was filled with water. <laughs> which the 1994 film with Robert De Niro as the creature, they also did. So that's another thing with Hammer, is their production design, even though it might look cheap, I think it looks great. I really do. And I love like the title cards, the credits are in old English, usually in red. It really just has this classic gothic horror look that I absolutely love I really do <clears throat> but Curse of Frankenstein great start for Hammer you know what a wonder it's not the first one I saw the first one I saw was Curse of the Werewolf fairly recently but I I kind of fell asleep I have to watch it again but for this being their first real horror film yeah just the kickstart to just redoing all this gothic classic stuff hell of a start. I really enjoyed Curse of Frankenstein. It was, it was great. But anyway, thank you for watching.